Well, as promised, we can get more now on the war in Ukraine. In February 2022, Moscow had planned to take control of Ukraine in a matter of days. But the Ukrainian resistance uh, slowed Russia's progress and days, as we know, turned into months. Well, we can get analysis now on how the first weeks of the war unfolded from Professor Michael Clark. Thanks, Sam. Um, uh, this is the actual anniversary of the beginning of the war, the day the inv invasion took place. So this is the 366th day of what was intended to be a three-day war. And we know that it was intended to be a three-day war now, we're sure, because the Russians intended to grab Kiev in the first three days and within a couple of weeks to have pacified and settled the other cities that they intended to take. And so it was a four-front war to begin with, a push towards Kiev from Belarus and from the northwestern districts of the uh, Russian border, a push towards uh, the cities in the, uh, the northeast, a push in the Donbass, and the easiest push of all, uh, northwards from Crimea, where the logistics were easier, the distances weren't so great, to actually move up to grab this land bridge between the Donbass and Kherson, and then push towards Odessa and take the port, the third city uh, of Ukraine itself. And in those early days, we, our attention, of course, was all on Kiev, what was happening there. Two things were really important. Hostomel Airport, the airfield. The VDV, the Russian uh, airborne troops, took Hostomel, and that was important. They wanted to use that as their jumping-off place to grab the government in Kiev, and then they could use that to bring in thousands of troops to take the rest of the city. They took it, but they lost it again. The Ukrainians got it back, and that's the important thing. So the Russians lost their foothold in Hostomel Airport. And then the second thing, we were all watching this great convoy that developed uh, coming out of Belarus down to the west of Kiev. And we were waiting for this convoy to surround Kiev along with the forces coming in uh, further from the, uh, the northeast. In fact, we now know it wasn't a convoy. It was a traffic jam. There were 10 battalion tactical groups who couldn't make headway over the rough ground, over the boggy ground, so they headed for the road. And because their maps weren't very good and their coordination was terrible, they all headed for the same road. So in the end, there were 10,000 uh, troops, 1,000 main battle tanks, 2,400 uh, uh, armoured vehicles all stuck on the same road. It was a 35-mile, month-long traffic jam. That's what it was. Eventually, it all, it all uh, 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 released itself, it sort of unraveled itself, and the battle for Kiev was over. And so we ended up a month after the beginning of the war, and it had looked like this. Kiev was saved because of the incompetence of the Russian advance, but they were digging in, as it were. They were making progress in the other cities, in the, in the north, in the Donbass, and across the land bridge. The Ukrainians were fighting back in dynamic defence. They weren't able to do very much, but they were dynamically defending wherever they could. You can't defend a single line when you're outnumbered. You just sort of hit where you can. That's what they did. Effectively, at this stage, after a month, they were doing very well, but we all knew they were losing slowly. Think about the war on the 24th of March, after about a month. It was clear that the Russians were in several areas, around Kiev, in the northeast, in the Donbass, and in this land bridge to the south. There were four big fronts. And although we could see that the Russians were making hard work of it, we thought that they will learn, they'll get better at it. They were made no more hard work of it than in the great convoy that was approaching Kiev from the west. We now know it wasn't a convoy, it was a monumental traffic jam. Ten different battalion tactical groups all sought the same road to get away from the soft ground without proper planning, proper communication. And in the end, uh, 1,000 tanks, 2,400 armoured vehicles, 10,000 troops were involved in a 35-mile traffic jam that spent a month uh, before it could unwind itself. That was monumental. But that's where the war seemed to be after a month. We thought they'll get it right. They'll move in on these areas and try probably to move into the area uh, east of the Dnieper River and take the whole of this uh, eastern part of the country. But that's where we are today. Just look at the difference. The red areas indicate where the Russians occupy. The yellow areas are the two fairly big areas that the Ukrainians have liberated. So Kharkiv Oblast, Kharkiv region, they've got right through to the border of Luhansk. And in the west, they've taken back a lot of the Kherson ob uh, uh, Oblast right through to taking the city of Kherson itself, making the Russians abandon the city. And so here are the Russians occupying the Donbass, which they now say is their prime target, and holding on to this land bridge, very important to them, to maintain control of Crimea. But both sides are now preparing their offensives. As the winter plays itself out, we are expecting a lot more manoeuvre on this map, and we'll see in the months to come as the winter fades away who has the momentum 
in the next phase of this war, which certainly will run through for, I guess, the better part of this year at least.